Okay, good evening, everybody. Good evening, sir. How are you this evening? So, this evening is uh, we are going to talk about. Uh, so this chapter is led by Alexa. Yeah? Chapter mm -hmm. chapter what? Chapter okay, please. Uh, so before we start our discussion, let you give the opening comment first. Okay, from Jackie, please give the opening comment first. Hello, can you hear my voice? Yes, I can hear your voice. Okay, so hello everyone. Good evening. My name is Zaki Andorik Sanida. And today we, we are here to discuss about chapter seven, uh, which is about, um, wait a second. It's about training, uh, how to assess training and uh, why do we need uh, to train our employees and what do we need in order to train our employees? So the reason why I joined this class is to understand more uh, how to train employees. That's all. Thank you. Welcome to Fatima, please. Hello, Fatima. Please, Fatima, give the opening comment. Assalamualaikum uh, warahmatullahi uh, First, can you hear my voice? <laughs> what is that? Can everyone hear my voice? I cannot hear you. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Fatima Zarelrus, and today we are going to learn about Chapter, uh, chapter seven, and the reason why I joined this class because I want to learn more about a training employee and in order to fill in the gap from the previous chapter that we have learned. So I decided to join this class. Thank you, sir. Okay, please show up, please. Um, good, good evening, everyone. My name is Fiona Sarvita. <coughs> um, Today, we will learn about chapter seven, which talk about training employees. And the reason why I attend this class is because I want to um, learn and see more about the topic of training employees. Because as we know, later on, when we are in the work environment or we as the manager, we will face the training employees face. So I think it will be great if start from now we already learn about this topic. Alexa, please. Okay, so in this chapter uh, about training, it's help uh, to the company um, create a better employees in the in the workplace in the future, and then make all the trainers become a more professional in the work environment. Okay, please, Alessa, lead the discussion. So it is your turn to lead the discussion, please. Start the discussion. Okay, okay please wait a minute. Um, sir, you are disabling the share screen, share screen participant. What? Do you want to share screen? Yeah. Okay, wait a moment. No, you can share screen, please. please sir.
Okay. Um, good evening, everyone. So, yeah, okay. So today we are going to talk and discuss about chapter seven. So in chapter seven, uh, we are going to discuss about training employees. So first for the introduction, the research client to advanced technology institute is a non-profit organization that helps companies collaborate with schools and government on research and development is that ati offers them access to talented experts in other words the skill of its people are central to what the organization does so the human research function that helps employees like venture increase their value to their organization training and then for the training definition. So training itself is an organization's plan effort to help employees acquire job-related knowledge, skill, abilities, and behavior with the goal of applying this on the job. So training consists of an organization's plan effort to help employees acquire job-related knowledge, skills, abilities, and behavior with the goals of applying this on the job. A training programs may range from normal classes to one-on-one -on -one mentoring, and it may take place on the job or remote location. So, training linked to organizational need. The nature of the modern business environment makes training more important today than it never has been. Rapid change, especially in the area of technology, requires that employees continually learn new skills. Growing reliance and teamwork creates a demand for the ability to solve problems in turn, an ability that often requires formal training. With training so essential in modern organizations, it is important to provide training that is effective. An effective training program actually teaches what it is designed to teach, and it teaches skills and behavior that will help the organization achieve the goal. To achieve this goal, human resource professional approach training through instructional design, a process of systematically developing training to meet specific needs. And then next, this is the instructional design. So there are five stages of instructional design. The first stage is assess needs for training, and then next, ensure readiness for training. The third one is plan program, plan training program. The, in the plan training program, there are three methods. There are objective, trainees, and then method. And then for the fourth stage, there are implementing training program. And then for the last stage is evaluate result of training. So it begins with an assessment of the need for training, what the organization requires that its people to learn. Next, the organization ensure that employees are ready for training in terms of the attitudes, motivation, basic skills, and work in the environment. The third step is to plan the training program, including including the program objective instructor and the searching method. The organization then implements the program and then give it a feedback for the final. And then evaluating the result of the training provides feedback for planning future training programs. And then for the next one is needs assessment. Instructional design logically should begin with a need assessment, the process of evaluating the organization. Individual employees and employees task to determine what kind of training, if any, are necessary. So need assessment, the process of evaluating the organization, individual employees and employees task to determine what kinds of training, if any, are necessary. A variety of conditions may prompt an organization to conduct a need assessment, 
manage management by observers that some employees like basic skills or are performing poorly. Decision to produce new products, apply new technology, or design new jobs should prompt a new assessment because this change tends to require new skills. A reminder of this chapter discusses need assessment and then what the organization should do when assessment indicates a need for training. The possibilities for actions include offering existing training programs to more employees, buying or developing new training programs, and improving existing training programs. Before we consider the available training option, let's examine the elements the needs set the needs assessment in more detail. Organization analysis. Usually, the need assessment begins with the organization analysis. This is a process for determining the appropriation of training by evaluating the characteristic of the organization. The organization <laughs> analysis looks at training needs in light of organization strategy resources available for training and management support for training activities. Training needs will vary depending on whether the organization strategy is based on growing or shrinking its personnel, whether it's seeking to serve a broad customer base or focusing on the specific needs of a narrow market segment and various other strategic scenarios. And then person analysis. The person analysis is a process for determining individuals' needs and re readiness for training. It helps the manager identify whether training is appropriate and which employees need training. In certain situations, such as the introduction of new technology or service, all employees may need training. However, when need assessment is conducted in response to a performance problem, Training is not always the best solution. The person analysis is therefore critical when training is considered in response to a performance problem. Therefore, before planning a training program, it is important to be sure that any performance problem results from a deficiency in knowledge and skills. Otherwise, training dollars will be wasted because the training is unlikely to have much effect performance. The per Person analysis also should determine whether employees are ready to undergo training. In other words, the employees to receive training not only should require additional knowledge and skill, but must be willing and able to learn. Task analysis. The third area of need assessment is task analysis. The process of identifying the task knowledge, skills, and behavior that training should emphasize. Usually, task analysis is conducted along with person analysis. Understanding shortcomings in performance usually requires knowledge about the task and work environment as well as the employee. To carry out the task analysis, the human resource professional looks at the condition in which tasks are performed. This condition include the equipment and environment of the job, time constraints, for the example, deadline, safety consideration, and performance standards. This observation from the basis for a description of work activities are the tasks required by the person's job. For a selected job, the analysis interview employees and their supervisor to prepare a list of tasks performed in that job. Readiness for training. Effective training requires not only a program that address real needs, but also a condition of employee readiness. Readiness for training is a combination of employees' characteristic and positive work environment that permit training. The necessary employee characteristics include ability to learn subject matter, favorable attitudes towards the training and motivation to learn. A positive work environment is one that encourages learning and avoid interfer interfering with the training program. Planning the training program. 
Decisions about training are often the responsibility of a specialist in the organization's training or human resource department. When the needs assessment indicates a need for training and employees are ready to learn, the person responsible for training should plan a training program that directly relates to the needs identified. Planning begins with the establishing objective for the training program. Based on those objectives, the planner decides who will provide the training, what topics the training will cover, what training methods to use, and how to evaluate the training. Effective training objectives have several characteristics. The first one is they include a statement of what the employee is expected to do, or lever or performance that is acceptable and the condition under which the employee is to apply what he or she learned. And then mental stress or equipment failure. And then include performance standards that are measurable. Identify the resources needed to carry out the desired performance or outcome. Successfully training requires employees to learn, but also employees to provide the necessary resources. <clears throat> in-house or contract out. To select a training service, an organization can mail several vendors a request for a proposal, which is a document outlining the type of service needed, the type and number of references needed, the number of employees to be trained, the date by which the training is to be completed, and the date by which proposal should be received. A complete RFP also indicated the funding for the project and the process by which organization will determine its level of satisfaction. Putting together a request for proposal is time consuming but worthwhile because it helps the organization to clarify its objective, compare vendors and measure results. Cool. Choice of training method. After deciding on the goals and the content of the training programs, planners must decide how the training will be conducted. As we will describe in the next section, a wide variety of methods is available. Training program may use these methods alone or in combination. And in general, the methods used should be suitable for the course content and the learning abilities of the participant. Next is training methods. There are categories of training methods. So the first method is presentation method. Uh, present presentation method is trainees receive information provided by others. And then for the second method is hand-on methods. Trainees are actively involved in training out skills. And then for the third method is group building method. So in group building methods, training shares ideas and experience, build group identities, learn about interpersonal relationship and the group. And then next is on the job training. Training methods in which a person with job experience and skills guide trainers in practicing job skills at the workplace. This type of training takes various forms, including apprenticeship and internship. An apprenticeship is a work study training method that teaches job skills through a combination of structured on the job training and classroom training. Apprenticeship a work study training method that teach job skills through a combination of on-the-job training and classroom training. Team training. In team training, they are divided by, by two teams. So the first team is cross-training team. Training in which team members understand and practice each other's skills so that they are prepared to step in and take another member's place. In cross-training, team members understand and practice each other's skills so that they are prepared to step in and take another member's place. Mm -hmm. In a 
three, for example, production workers could be cross-trained to handle all phase of assembly. This enables the company to move them to position where they are most needed to complete and order on time. And the next coordination training team. Training that teach the team how to share information and make decision to obtain the best team performance. Coordination training trains the team in how to share information and decision to obtain the best team performance. This type of training is especially important for commercial aviation and surgical teams. Implementing the training program. Principle of learning. For employees to acquire knowledge and skills in the training programs are apply what they have learned in their job. The training program must be implemented in a way that applies what we know about people learn. To fully understand and remember the content of training, employees need a chance to demonstrate it and practice what they have learned. Trainers should provide ways to actively involve the trainers. Have them practice repeatedly and have them complete tasks within a time that is appropriate in light of the learning objective. Therefore, training sessions should offer feedback. Effective feedback focused on specific behaviors and is delivered as soon as possible after the trainers practice or demonstrate what they have learned. And then next, uh, ways to provide training activities. Um, for the first one is communicate the learning objective. The ways how to provide the training activity is demonstrate the performance to be expected, give example of question to be answered. And then the next activity is use distinctive attention, getting message. And then the way how to provide the training activity is to emphasize key points using the picture, not just word. And then for the next one is limit the content of training. Way to provide the training activity is group lengthy material into chunks, provide a visual image of the course material, provide opportunities with it and practice material. And then for the next one is elaborate on the subject. Ways to provide the training activities is to Present the material in different contexts and setting, relate new ideas to previously learned concept, practice in a variety of contexts and setting. And then for the next one is measuring result of training. The stage to prepare for evaluating a training program is when the program is being developed. Along with designing course objective and content, the planner should identify how to measure achievement of objective. The usual way to measure whether participants have acquired information is to admin, administer to test on papers or electronically. Trainers or supervisor can observe whether participants demonstrate the desired skill and behavior. Evaluation methods. Evaluation of training should look for transfer of training or on the job use of knowledge, skills, and behaviors learned in training. Transfer of training requires that employees actually learn the content of the training program and that the necessary conditions are in place for employees to apply what they learn. Assessment of training also should evaluate training outcomes. That is what has changed as a result of the training. The relevant training outcomes are the ones related to the organization's goals for the training and its overall performance. Possible outcomes include the following. Information such as facts, techniques, and procedures that trainers can recall after the training. Skills that trainers can demonstrate in tests or on the job. Trainers and supervisor satisfaction with the training program. Changes in attitude related to the content of training, for example, concern for safety or tolerance of diversity. 
improvement in individual, group, or company performance. For example, greater customer satisfaction, more sales, fewer defects. And then next one is application of training. Two training appli applications that have become widespread among us. Among US, companies are orientation of new employees and training in how to manage workforce by procedure. The first one is orientation of new employee. This training is the organization's orientation program. It's training designed to prepare employees to perform their job effectively, learn about the organization and establish work relationship. Organization provide the orientation because no matter how realistic the information provided during employment interview and site visit, people feel shocked and surprised when they start a new job. And then diversity training. This kind of environment includes access to job as well as fair and positive treatment of all employees. Besides these efforts, many organizations provide training designed to teach employees attitudes and behavior that support the management of diversity, such as appreciation of cultural differences and affordance of behavior that isolate or intimidate others. Training designed to change employee attitudes about diversity and or the flop skill needed to work with a diverse workforce is called diversity training. These programs generally emphasize either attitude awareness and change or behavior change. Diversity training is more likely to get everyone on board if it emphasizes respecting and valuing all the organization's employee in order to bring out the best work from everyone to open up the best opportunities for everyone. That is all for, for chapter two training methods. And then there are several questions that I want to ask you. Okay, for the first question, please mention the five stages of instructional design. Is there anyone want to answer? I want oh, to try. I would like to answer. I'm probably trying myself. Yeah? Fatima. Fatima, okay, you may answer. Fatima, you may answer the question. Oh, okay. So the question is, please mention the five stages of inter, uh, instructional design. So my answer is, there are five stages of inter, uh, instructional design. First, we have asset units for training, and then we have answer units for training, and then next we have plan training program, objective trainer method, and then employment training program. Last but not least, we have evaluate results of training. Okay, thank you for your answer. And then we are going to to the next question. Please explain how to assess the needs for training. Me, I want to answer. Okay, Zakia, you may answer okay. the question. So to assess the need for training, uh, so first, Le needs assessment consists of an organization analysis, person analysis, and task analysis. The organization analysis determines the appropriateness of training by evaluating the characteristic of the organization, which include its strategy, resource, and management support. And then the person analysis determines individual's need and readiness for training. And then the task analysis identifies the task knowledge, the skill, and behavior that training should emphasize. It is based on, it is based on ex, examination of the conditions in which tasks are performed, 
including equipment and environment of the job, time constraints, and safety considerations and performance standards. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Jessica. And then for the question number three, do performance deficiencies result from a lack of knowledge, skill, or ability? If so, if so, uh, please give the solution are uh, more relevant. Uh, I want to try to give my opinion. Okay, Fiona. Okay, so in my opinion, the performance deficiency is. Yes, Fiona, can... you may answer. Okay. Performance deficiencies can be affected by several factors. It can be from the lack of the motivation, but it also can be the result from a lack of knowledge, skill, or ability. Therefore, uh, I think it is important to have training in organization because with training, usually it's not only affecting to one factor or <clears throat> Uh, to one factors, but also affecting uh, other factors. For example, they are training to increase knowledge, but also in the same time increase the skills and ability as they train for it. Besides that, if the performance deficiency is caused by the lack of the motivation, then the company have to offer them some incentives or rewards so that they could uh, gain their motivation back. That's all. Okay, thank you, Fiona, for our answer. And then we're going to the question number four. Explain how to assess employees' readiness for training. Is there anyone else they want to answer? Uh, Is it number four now? Yes. Uh, I, think I, will, uh, I think I will answer it again. Can you please, please hear the question? Yeah. Uh, I will repeat the question. So explain how to assess employees re uh, readiness for training. So the question is, explain how to assess employee employee readiness in my opinion. Training requires not only a lack of the stress but also condition of employee readiness. A readiness for training is a combination of employee characteristics and a positive environment that permit training. And the necessary employee characteristics include ability to learn the subject matter, preferable attitude toward the training, and motivation. I think that's awesome. Maybe the other Thank you, Fatima, for your answer. Maybe anyone else want to add your opinion and different answers, or same with Fatima? If there is no any other question, I will jump to the question number five. So the question number five is, describe how to plan an effective training program. Anyone want to answer? Maybe me. Yes, Zakia, you may answer the question. Uh, so uh, to plan an effective training program, uh, we need to first establish the objective for the training program. This should define, define an expected performance or outcome, the desired level of performance, and the condition under which the performance should occur. 
based on the objective, the planner decide, decides who will provide the train, training methods to use and how to evaluate the training. Even when organization purchase outside training, someone in the organization, usually a member of the HR department, often is responsible for the training administration. So the training methods selected should be related to the objective and content of the training program. Training methods may include presentation methods, hands-on methods, and group building methods. That's all. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Zakia. And then for the next question is the question number six. Please mention and explain three categories of training methods. I will answer number six. Okay, Joanna, you may answer the question. Okay, the first one is presentation methods where trainees receive information provided by others, like what uh, we are doing now, I think. And then we have hands-on methods where trainees are actively involved in trying out skills. And lastly, the group building methods where trainees share their ideas and experiences build group identities and learn about interpersonal relationships and the group. Okay, thank you Fiona for your answer. And then for the question number seven, please give one example of on the job training method. Just one example. Anyone want to Okay, what do you want to answer? And then for the last question, please mention three ways of training activities and explain how to provide the activity. Anyone would like to answer the last question? Maybe I could try. Okay, so yeah. So three, three training activity, right? Yeah, three ways of training okay. activities. So uh, the first one is, the first training activity is communicate the learning objective. So to provide these training activities, we need to just demonstrate the performance to be expected and give example of question to be answered. Uh, and then the next one is uh, we need to use distinct, distinctive attention getting message, which is we to, to perfect to provide these activities, we need to emphasize the key points and use pictures, not just words. And then lastly is limit the content of training. So to provide these training activities, we need a group lengthy material into chunks and provide a visual image of the course material, provide opportunities to repeat, to repeat and practice material. 
that's all. Thank you. Thank you, Zakia. And thank you for all my friends that already answered my question. I'm listening to my talk show. And then this is the end of my talk show. Thank you. Okay. So, so, so the exercise presented the topic that of finding the influence, yeah. After presenting, and then see big question, yeah. So there are seven questions, yeah. If I'm not mistaken, I'm mistaken. Yeah, about training, yeah. Training has been, uh, has been, uh, yeah, has been discussed before, yeah. When you when you take, uh, at HRM, okay. So all on this mean that all of you have. Uh, get the opportunity to discuss the red and, and then maybe next week we I will give you the journal yeah journal related to the HRM so right but if it, uh, I, I want to ask uh, Fatima what happened to you Jim Fatima what happened to you uh, yeah. I'm, sorry. I'm sorry sir what, what was it what happened to you Jim what happened to my Jim I think it's yeah. not it really trouble ah so when you speak so there are there are people speaking to you uh, do you have uh, a program and it's at home do you have program at home? Do you have program? Do your family yeah. program in at home? Yeah. No, actually, we were currently uh, working on some projects for other oh. uh, classes, and I'm not I am not at home right now. So I'm sorry for the disturbance. Oh. I didn't mention. Okay, so if I think you have you are, you are your family. <laughs> oh no 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 family. This is uh, for another class project. Oh. I'm sorry, sir. Okay, good morning. Okay, so training is central to the, the employee's uh, experience. Yeah? So, depend on the class. Uh, and then, yeah. Uh, anything? Okay, so, uh, okay. Uh, at the time, uh, in conclusion, that is very important yeah, for the employees yeah, to to let it to experience to develop their knowledge, yeah, the skill. Yeah, but you know, uh, training can, can, can be given uh, in relation to the organizational analysis, yeah, and then task analysis and employee needs. So the the employee must must be willing to be trained, yeah. Yeah, not 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 to, uh, not to be forced by the companies. Yeah, There's something is possible not good to the company. Okay, next week I will give you the journal related to the HRM. Yeah, we talk about journal, right? Article. So we talk about the, the, the research. Yeah. Uh, so we study research. How to do research in HRM, so right? Yeah. Okay. So maybe I will give I will give five article. Yeah. So one student must read that also discussion. So we talk about the the title of the article, and then we talk about the backgrounds, and then the the the, the, the problem research, the problem relation, and the purpose of the study, and then the, the benefit of the study, and then the literature reviews, yeah, yeah, and then the research method and the and the discussion and the conclusion. Okay. Uh, any question before we start our uh, because our meeting today any question no question okay, i think i think that's all yeah it's good thank you very much for your concern see you later next next monday evening next monday evening, next monday evening yeah how how you do you want to to study offline in the class uh... I think for the next week, it's better for us to have an online class instead. Online, online, yeah, online. Yeah, online. On the evening, yeah. On the evening. Yeah. At the same time again. On the evening, yeah. Monday evening, yeah. Monday evening, okay, sure. Monday evening. Yes, yeah, that's right. Monday evening. Is it, is it okay? Okay, sir. Okay. It's okay. Okay, thank you very much for your attention. See you later next Monday evening. So uh, on Sunday, I will uh, be okay. Okay, any question? No? No question? Uh, sir, are, are you going to ask, ask us about the summary of this discussion? Yes. Yeah. Uh, we have, we have, yeah. what, is, what, is, what is the summary? What is the summary? Yeah, that is very important, yeah? Very important. Uh, 
So every company must must be planning for the people, yeah. And now the job, yeah, right, yeah, so that's, yeah, but to do the training, the company must look at the original analysis, yeah, and then the, the task, and then the employee itself, yes, yeah, okay, and don't waste the money for the for the useless training, so that the training must be must be effective, efficient, and, and productive, yeah, okay, to the conclusion, okay, and it, okay, that's all, yeah, I think that's all, see you later next Monday evening. Okay. Thank you, sir. 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 Thank you, sir